Welcome into Press Box Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of Press Box and PressBoxOnline.com. And with me is Luke Jackson, the managing editor of Press Box and PressBoxOnline.com. Give us a salute, Luke, so we know which one is Luke Jackson. I am saluting. I am not the former Major League pitcher. Okay. Or and, the current Major League pitcher named Luke Jackson. I'm right. not him either. But there is a former Major League pitcher that joins us each and every Monday, and that is Ross Grimsley, the left-hander. I used you again recently, Ross. Oh, gosh. Uh, you were 0.3% in the oh, good. Immaculate <laughs> grid. I'm, I'm go- you, right, going up. I'll tell you who's unbelievable, though, I found. I, I never have used Orlando Cepeda, right, when he isn't 1% or less. It really? shocks me. Like today, it asked for a St. Louis Cardinal that won an MVP. And, you know, how many are there? Stan Musial probably won one. Yeah. Cool Holtz won one. I'm sure there's others. Right. But readily, I went, hey, 1967, Cepeda won it with the Cardinals. One percent of the v- voting public got that. Anyway, yeah. nobody cares. They're not going to get that. people from that far back. Nobody cares about it. <laughs> hey. We want to let you know that we're brought to you by the expert and award-winning A.J. Michael, heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and home performance. They'll improve your home's energy efficiency and comfort levels and uh, get ready for the heat season. It's coming on. Uh, there are new rebates and discounts available. More at AJMichaels.com. A.J. Michaels and Carrier. Let them do the work for you. Um, Luke, I turn to you because I think you'll understand how to explain it to people. I understand in the American League, the Detroit Tigers play the next three days starting tomorrow at Houston. Mm -hmm. I understand that the Kansas City Royals, the number five seed in the American League, are at the Orioles for the next three days. But Mm -hmm. in the National League, I have figured out that Milwaukee will host three games Mm -hmm. and San Diego will host three games. That's all true. All right. Who's going to play where? Well, as we're talking right now on Monday at 530, uh, the Mets won the first game of this doubleheader. They went, they're in. The they're in. Uh, if they lose this uh, game, in, uh, I believe they'll go to Milwaukee. Okay. And if the Braves uh, win this game too, they will go to San Diego. Okay, so the Braves will so, go to San Diego if, if it's a split here. If the Mets win both, do they end up going to the Diamondbacks play I think, San Diego? Hold on. No, I might have messed that up. I I, I might have gotten confused. Very there. easy to do that. So, so, yeah, I, so, so, I'm telling you, I got lost. My head. So I, I think actually if the Mets win this game today, like the one that's going on right now, right. Then they will actually maybe go to San Diego and then the and Braves then the will Diamondbacks out, will go and the Diamondbacks to Milwaukee. Will go to Milwaukee. And if the Braves, excuse me, if the Mets lose this second game, then they would go to Milwaukee, I think. Okay. I might have messed all it right. up. I'm sorry. All right. It's a little all confusing. Right. That's all right. Hey, it really is. It's quite confusing. We've, I don't ever recall. Steve Jeffy texted me today. He says if Atlanta wins, it'll be the first time ever that two teams have celebrated clinching playoff spots on the same field. <laughs> and that's deep, yeah. that's deep thinking by Steve. But it's true. It's pretty wild, isn't it, Ross? Well, I don't know if they've ever had a double hitter uh, to decide who goes to uh, the the playoffs, which is uh, which is actually pretty exciting. The game, uh, the first game, I first we were talking must about have been it. Wild. That was that was amazing. I mean, there was uh, nobody could get anybody out after the I think the sixth or seventh inning. It was three to nothing, and. Uh, they bounced back, and it was like a heavyweight fight, just blow after blow. And it was Atlanta was up three nothing. The Mets scored six, right? They go yes, in front, yeah. then then Atlanta went ahead seven yep. to six. Yep. And then the, the uh, Francisco Lindor hit a two run homer in the ninth. Yeah. Yeah, and Lindor has been amazing for this yep. Mets team all season. Right yeah. now, he is uh, playing with a wonky back, and it's the kind of thing where if this happened in June or July, he'd be out a month. And he's really grinding through it. He's not only uh, hitting, but he's playing shortstop at a high yeah. level. I mean, he's a heck of a player. He posts up. Uh, one of the best players in baseball for quite a while at this point. Yeah. And the Mets are very lucky to have him. 
Yeah, I, I, I was I was worried when they picked him. Uh, one of the players, he hit the home run. One of the players picked him up. Had him in a big I was like, oh boy, yeah, he, I'm going to put him down. Come on. <laughs> gonna, oh yeah, I, hit him. I'll tell you one thing Lindor does really well. He hugs a billionaire very well. Yeah. They showed him yeah. hugging. <laughs> come, uh, there in he Atlanta. knows who to hug. He's got, he's got that down. All right. Uh, at, as we speak, and I don't want to get too into as we speak because a lot of people are watching it after the fact, but Atlanta is leading one to nothing over the Mets in the second game of the doubleheader. And again, very simple. If Atlanta loses, they're out, and Arizona's in. If Atlanta wins, both Atlanta and the Mets will play. We'll figure out who they play later on. Where and who. Yeah, and where and who. <laughs> uh, we're more into talking about the Orioles right here. But before we do, Ross, uh, somebody I think you worked for briefly uh, for a couple of years out there in San Francisco, Farhan Zaidi, has been let go as team president of the San Francisco Giants. And uh, I know somebody you know, Buster Posey, is right. now going to be the president of baseball ops for his team. Yeah, I, it how was, do you think that? How do you think he'll be at that job? Well, he was he was a leader uh, on the ball team uh, yeah. when he was with the Giants. A great guy to be around. Uh, great to listen to. And like I said, he was a leader, and uh, uh, the, the pitchers really respected him because he knew how to call a game and do some things. And uh, uh, I think this was something that. Uh, that Zidi expected. I think he was really under the thought. I mean, and, but as far as bringing Buster Posey in, I think that was uh, a little, possibly a surprise. I don't really know uh, exactly, but uh, to some of us, it was a surprise. Not that he's uh, very capable of probably doing it. And I think he will go back to some of the old baseball ways. Cause uh, I know when I was, my last year with the giants was 2014 and a couple of years before that, well, actually a year before that or so, they started relying a lot on analytical uh, stuff. And coincidentally, over the next several years, uh, they went backwards. And depending on that so much, not that you can't use it, but you can't solely depend on it as much as they were. And I think it created some problems and didn't help the, help the ball club. So now with Buster Posey, you got somebody that hopefully – well, I have to listen to him. It's like having Ripken with the Orioles. Yeah, you know, yeah, you got you got your analytics, but you got baseball stuff that that uh, and and baseball eyes and baseball feel and knowing what's going on that you can relate to. Hopefully, some of the players, some of the coaches, and even the manager on on some teams. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Hopefully, uh, I'll get a little more information later on when I you know talk to some people I know, and uh, we'll find out some a little more information. All right, now, I, we don't know the schedule next week for the Orioles, but uh, they might be playing Monday next week. But we'll find out what time. But if we're on, maybe you'll get Shane Turner on with us. We used to work with the Giants both to talk about that and also talk about the ongoing playoffs right now. Right. Which is, uh, Luke, I just wanted to ask you, did it remind you about 10 days ago or 12 days ago when they announced that big extension to Matt Chapman, the Giants, mm -hmm. and they let out the news that it had been Buster Posey at, who basically got the deal done and negotiated. Remind me a little bit of when the Orioles suddenly signed Alex Cobb and Andrew Cashman in spring training about four or five years ago, uh, 2018. And then we find out about a month into the season and both of them were were clients of Brady Anderson who negotiated their deals, but they were clients of his agent. Uh, it, it reminded me it under, it obviously um, cut across Stan Duquette's authority. And I think far anxiety knew he was, his days were done when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently Buster this year had taken on a more influential role with the giants uh, yeah. Maybe Ross would know more about that. And I'm guessing just based on this promotion that he has the immense respect of ownership, um, not only what he did as a player, but uh, what he means, A, to the franchise and B, as a baseball mind. And as he transitions into this new stage of his career, it will be fascinating to see if he can do what kind of what Chris Young has done, right? Uh, Chris Young was a very successful but, but not what chris gets has done 
There you go. There you go. Uh, Chris Young had a very successful major league career as a uh, as a uh, right handed starting pitcher, uh, and he was actually one of the first guys. Uh, and now we're getting a little off track, but that's okay. One of the first guys I remember hearing about spin rate because he threw like 88, 89 miles an hour up in the zone. And I always would watch him thinking like, how are they just popping it up? They're just popping it up, swinging it. Like, how is that happening? And it turns out he had one of those very high spin fastballs that it might have been 88, 89, but it stayed on play. Played like it was. It played bigger than that yeah and so and now chris young of course is the uh gm of the uh, rangers and he won a world series last year if there's a, a, anything that buster posey touches seems to turn to gold ross so i'm not going to doubt yeah you know you look, look chris chris young big tall guy big hands you look a lot of guys with big hands they're he's pretty a, good he's chance. an ivy leaguer right he yes he is he's, yeah. I, he's, he's very intelligent when i had uh when i was involved uh we had a company that were making protective hats for pitchers and little leaguers and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, we went to uh, major league baseball, went to New York and sat down and talked with him. And he was obviously very intelligent and uh, knew what, uh, knew what was going on. So that going to where he went to Texas, I think, and what he did uh, there, you know, was great. You know, he's got the, uh, the ability to do things like that because he's smart, but the spin rate, you know, that's something that guys, big hands, Mike Quayer, I'm pretty sure, with the curveball and screwball that he threw, he had a pretty good spin rate. Uh, Bly Levin, big time curveball. His curveball was so good, the umpires get fooled and they couldn't call, it, you know. But uh, guys like that, spin rate, yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully- ben, McDonald, ben McDonald talks about how he would throw the same velocity as Mike Messina and he would throw a fastball in the middle of the plate. And with Ben, it might get, it might get hit hard. And Mike would throw the same, he thought was the same yeah. pitch. Same location, same velocity, and it would pop it up. Right. And now Ben knows that, oh, he Mike Messina probably had a high spin fastball. Well, he, he, yeah. he probably, uh, more so than that, he probably hid the ball that was harder to pick up. Mm-hmm. That, that's yeah, another great big deception. Thing. Your, your, yeah. your delivery and where the ball comes out of and how it comes out. And if your other pitches are very similar to that, you'll get away with those uh, belt high fastballs because and, and of that. I- and I'll bet somebody as dominant as Ben was never had to worry about deception because when he was when he was a kid, he was always so dominant, he just did what he did. If he had been more deceptive, he probably would have been more successful. Well, that, that's kind of hard to teach. I mean, you're, you either yep. got it or usually yes. you don't. You start messing around with uh, trying to do different things like that. And it'll affect your delivery, your control, your command. And, uh, you know, spin rate, velocity, all that kind of rigmarole. But, yeah, it's uh, something else. Ross, I know it's a a little uh, far afield here. How many millions did you make in the uh, protective hat industry? (laughs) COVID got us. COVID got it? COVID got us. And uh, Is there any chance of bringing it back? uh, Not, you know, over that period of time, I think more people – uh, involved in that in that progress past us. I mean, we we got a uh, a grant from the uh, National Science Foundation, right? And when COVID hit, it moved us back. And I think some of the bigger companies progressed and did stuff, and we really couldn't do it. So yeah, I millions. Uh, you know, no, we didn't do that. <laughs> Did, you expect that one day in the not too distant future, pitchers will have something that they can wear that they're comfortable with, or is it a long way off? I no, I, I think it's there. But now, now you have the uh, the head pier piece or whatever. They yeah, want. yeah. So they're going to have so much stuff. The hat's going to be the size of a you know, <laughs> football helmet. But yeah, I I think they'll come up with something. The I mean, we were very fortunate. We had some people that worked with uh, uh, safety devices, stuff like that, military grade uh, uh, equipment. And, and stuff and we were you know we were ahead of everybody at the time and it just you know COVID knocked us out of it and we just didn't recover from that as I'm sure many people uh, did but I, I'm sure they'll have something in the future. All right let's pivot to uh, the series in front of us Luke. Uh, manager Brandon Hyde today at his uh, press briefing uh, to the media said that the club is he was asked a question about the roster for the first mm-hmm. series and said it's uncertain yet. And he said also 
pass uh, Corbin Burns, it's uncertain who's going to start game two and who's going to yep. start game three. Is there a chance in your mind if Burns wins game one that they might save Eflin for game three? Uh, well, I think they probably know what direction they're going to go, and they just don't have to announce it yet, so they're not going to. That would be my guess. Uh, I mean, it would I, seem like Eflin would be two and Kramer would be three. Right. With but the once idea you've won game one, I'm wondering if you want to save Eflin for, you know. Well, you're hoping at that point, if you went that direction, that Kramer could go two, you win game two, and then you have Eflin for game one in New York. That yeah. would be the idea. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're – probably thinking a little bit too far ahead in the sense that I, they probably know who they're going to go with in game two. They just don't have to announce it yet. In terms of the roster, I imagine that the wild card series will be 14 position players, 12 pitchers. You think, I think teams Ross, in the, that sounds Eflin, about right. Doesn't it? Uh, I think pitchers in a, in a three game series, Ross. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled. Why in the world wouldn't you start Eflin the second game? I think they will. I, I, that, that is just absolutely. He hasn't bizarre. announced. He did not <laughs> announce he, he, <laughs> he didn't announce he's not starting him. I'm wondering yeah. what the subterfuge is about. We don't know who's going to start game two. But uh, <laughs> I get really sneaky. <laughs> God. <laughs> so uh, I think teams in the past have done in this wild card series uh, 15 position players and 11 pitchers. The one guy we know is not going to be on the roster for this series is Albert Suarez who threw six innings yeah, right. on Sunday to save everyone else, basically right. for the wild card series. So I think anything else is on the table though. He would, he would open up against the Yankees. Uh, he could. Yeah. yeah that, that would, I mean, logically, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to get to the Yankee series, you know, I would run my two yeah. best guys out there. And then that means they're going to come back sooner for the series right. against the Yankees, when it's a best of five, if I'm not uh, now, you're you're talking crazy, Ross. You're just uh, talking- yeah, I know it, it <laughs> makes way too much sense. You know, <laughs> and, do we one hundred percent know the Orioles are going to play the Yankees? Yes, or yes, it, it's the not winner of the, it at all by Houston. And yeah, Detroit? it's a it's a bracket setup. I, I I don't like the bracket setup, but the uh, Orioles are on the Yankee side of the AL bracket. So okay, all right. Oh, they don't want them facing them in the final. The final. Um, no, it's just that uh, the number one seed faces four and five. The four five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, that roster. So who who do you think's not going to make it amongst the the pitchers? We know Suarez is one of them. The four lefties are obviously going to make it. Webb and Dominguez are going to make it. So right. that sticks. Cano is going to make it. That's seven. Right. And then four starters, probably. Probably well, three, Povich. Well, three, you, you need three starters. Yeah, um, but you need but Povich, I think, makes I, it. Yeah, I think Povich will be on the roster. I don't know how often he has worked in relief as a pro. Uh, certainly not in the big leagues, I don't think, this year yeah. as he worked in relief. But he's probably had some piggyback starts. I'm not worried about I, You know, I think uh, he's grown very nicely over the past yeah we've weeks. talked to in the past that uh, he's going to be a big deal for them next year not to look too far ahead but yeah you know they 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 need him to step up next year as well yeah. uh so yeah I, I see him on the roster so that that brings us to how many i i guess we would just have i one. think that would be 11 if you right. had so you would have one three starting team. pitchers and him is four and seven relievers would be 11 pitchers so you would have one other spot if you wanted the extra pitcher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that would be like. Uh, well, didn't they get. Uh, what's who's the new guy they got? Oh, Davidson. Bowman. 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 Yeah. No, Could Bowman's be. on there, but Davidson. They got a, a Davidson from. Oh, uh, they, 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 they DFA'd him. They DFA'd him. DFA'd him yeah. yeah. Tough business. You come up. You yeah, give them six innings. And, yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you're one of the main reasons or where, where they're at. And Suarez is not even on the roster. Right. But that's right. Un- understandable in a way. Yeah. Um, are we due for any surprises on the position players? Well, I think Holiday will be on the roster because I think they need someone to play short if something were to happen in a pinch. To and also, he might be the best pitch runner. Yeah, you, you would, would want him to run. I think Rivera is going to be on the roster because you I know, think right-handed... he's played his way on. Yeah, him. you need a right handed bat off the bench. Uh, and he's proven that he's got some pop. Uh, Slater will be on. 
And and Jimenez was sent down to Florida. But he's to, in town again. He's back in he town. He was at the workout today. So, okay. yeah, does he become a pinch hitting option? Well, that, that, they've got he's, several left handers in the bullpen, don't they? Kansas, the Orioles, Kansas City. Kansas City. Or, City. Kansas City does. Uh, they got uh, Zerba. They, they got Zerba. They got still got Will Smith. Right. I thought he was hurt. He's not hurt. I I don't think he's on the IL now. I'm not sure. Yeah. But and most of their arms are right-handed. They I got think. some power right-handed. They got Urseg and they've got Harvey. And Hunter Harvey's on the IL. Oh, he's on the IL. Okay. Yeah, he's on the IL. All right. So is Urseg been their closer for the most Ursic's part? Urseg's been their closer. Yeah. Okay. Urseg's been their closer. John Schreiber's back. Right. Um, he's a good arm. They got a couple other interesting arms there I forget but the big are. strength of their team obviously is Bobby Witt Salvi right. Perez and their starting rotation right. they've yeah. got Reagans uh Waka and uh who's and Lugo. Lugo. Lugo Lugo and, and they, they got a good top three, three. It's not going to be easy to beat that right I brought up to both Brandon Hyde and Corbin Burns um the need to control their running game they've got mm -hmm. three guys although one of them Blanco, Darian Blanco is uh, a real part timer, but three guys over 30 stolen bases. Yeah. And I remember they ran the Orioles ragged. Uh, and uh, Brandon Hyde talked about how Burns has uh, worked, worked over the last month at coming up with some different stuff. And then I asked Burns the same question. And it's interesting. He said at the time that he was reworking some of his mechanics he got he was able to get quicker to first base and quicker at a home plate and he's come up with a few other things he's obviously it's on front of mind with him now that he's got to keep runners uh close right and i would not be surprised if mccann catches him tomorrow uh because kansas city will start a left-hander so you get an extra right hand bat in the lineup right. and i love the way mccann catches burns and McCann, for me, throws a little bit better than Adley. Yep. And if you have a pitcher who's a little slow to home, you want a better thrower behind the plate. And McCann has been the better player the past three months. Yeah, I mean, there's, there, I'm, I mean, I'm, it's crazy. I'm just, I'm just being factual here. I it's mean, crazy. Well, I hope that, that he keeps his hand behind him and don't get a foul tip off his hand. Right, because he he that he's susceptible to that because he does it all the time. Question, well, just, question to both of you about Rutschman though. The mm -hmm. last three, four games, he suddenly, you know, I know it's a small sample size. You seeing anything different, either one of you? Right. And not swinging at uh, as bad of pitches. And that's the whole deal with, uh, with the Oriole hitters. I mean, they, they live and die by the home run, but sometimes you gotta, you, you gotta take what you can get and, uh, and, and put the ball in play. And that's one of the problems that they haven't done in the second half, basically, they, they're still swinging for the fences, swinging at bad pitches. Uh, you know, and I, I know Rushman will chase that ball down, a breaking ball, especially yeah. down and in. And uh, it, it just it doesn't have luck with it. Luke, it's funny. You and I text all the time during games. This club, when Rushman and O'Hearn are hitting well, mm -hmm. It just seems like the whole team does well offensively, you know. Right. And now with Westberg, Urias, and Mountcastle back, the the offense just doesn't look as as gloomy as it has for like five weeks leading up to the last week of the season. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, uh, with all the bats that were out being right-handed, that left them particularly susceptible to left-handed pitching. Yeah, and against Reagan's tomorrow. It's going to be awfully nice to have Ryan Mountcastle. It's going to be awfully nice to have Jordan Westberg and to have Ramon Urias. Uh, because before, there was a that game where they were nearly no hit in Detroit, or maybe it was nearly a perfect game. I forget. Yeah. Uh, uh, A.J. Hinch deployed a left-handed bulk guy after his opener. And – I mean, the kid looked really good. I forget who it was. It was a good-looking lefty, but it was a hot knife through butter. Was it they Gunther? Just... Was it Gunther? Hunter, maybe? Gunther. Oh, her Herder. Yeah, Herder. There you go. Herder. And it, yeah. Like I said, it was a hot knife through butter. They just didn't have the right-handed bats to match up. Yeah, yeah. And now they do against yeah. a, a lefty. And so we'll see what happens. Our, as Buck Showalter used to say, our curiosity will be satisfied. 
right. Hey, uh, I need you to pull your thumbs out uh, because right. it's time for the Costas in. And then we'll we'll make our predictions on this first series. I think I know how we're all going to predict. But I wonder how many of the three of us had the Ravens last night. Uh, I picked the, the Bills last night, getting two and a half points. Oh, come so on, I thought, Stan. I thought, the Ravens, <laughs> I thought the Ravens would win the game, but I thought the, uh, the spread was a little high. Uh, Costas Inn, located at 4100 North Point Boulevard, and if you don't have a ticket to tomorrow's game and it's a little bit wet outside, because it might be, although I hear the rain is going to be mostly in the morning and it might be one of those days where it gets a little clearer and they may play in a little bit of a drizzle tomorrow. But if it's you don't have a ticket, there's no better place than the Constance Inn to go watch a baseball game. The TVs, they got about 12 TVs across the bar and the restaurant. Got great crab soup, great crab cakes. Get a nightly special for dinner if you go past, uh, I guess, 5 o'clock for dinner. Uh, dinner special. Costas Inn is a one-of-a-kind place uh, and really one of the landmark restaurants in Baltimore. All three of us have eaten there many, many times, and we love the place. And, of course, we give it two thumbs up. Luke? Two thumbs oh, up. I'm Six thumbs. Right. Uh, the Costas Inn. What else can you do? You know, you say the same thing. So we came up with this cute thing with the thumbs, and I think it speaks well of the Costas Inn. Um, guys, we've got this series. It's a best two out of three. It looks like it'll be Raven, uh, Reagan's Lugo Waka. It's a tough three customers to face. They'll face in one way or the other, Burns, Eflin, and Kramer in some shape or form. Uh, who do we like, Ross? Who are you picking in this series? I, you know, I, I think I think the O's in a short series, especially. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they're going to have to control the running uh, running game that uh, uh, Kansas City will do. Stop! Don't let Whit beat you. Don't let him beat you. I mean, let somebody else, and that will be the well, one of the big things. I mean, one of the ways to stop the running game is get it, keep them off the bases. And That's Corbin a good Burns, way. I, yeah. Corbin Burns might just have the stuff to do that. Well, that I mean, you know, the, all three of the starters for the Orioles have been pitching really well. The thing, the bullpen, uh, I think in September was the third worst. They had a 551 earn run average. So that's concerned. But I, I think if they, uh, they get deep in the game, uh, with the Orioles starters, that will be big, and I think they're very capable of doing that. But it also, Kansas City, the last, I think, 11 games, they've scored 20 runs. They've averaged under two runs a game. So that that uh, goes in favor of the Orioles starters and pitching staff as well. So I, I think the O's can win this here uh, against Kansas City. It's not, you know, three-game series. I think it, it, that leans more towards them. Uh, the O's for me than uh, Kansas City at that. Luke, who you like in the series? Uh, oh, you put me on the spot. I mean, it's a baseball series, so anyone could win. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. I understand that. Um, uh, well, the Orioles. That's why we. Win. That's the kind of expertise we count on. I know that's what the viewers expect. On the show. Yeah. Um, the Orioles haven't won a postseason game since 2014. <laughs> that needs to end this year, Stan. Needs to end tomorrow. That needs to end, yes, tomorrow. That would be nice. Um, I would love for the Orioles, which didn't happen a ton in the second half. It happened a lot in the past week. They won five out of their last six. And so hopefully that means they're playing good ball now. But to get a couple of runs early and allow your starter to play from in front, when Corbin Burns gets a couple of early runs and he can play from in front, he is really, really good. He knows how to take advantage of an aggressive, antsy team on the other side. So I, I think that the Orioles will uh, handle business at home in this series. They should be able to handle business at home uh, in this series. Uh, but don't underestimate the Royals. Um, I know that uh, the Orioles missed Scooble, and I know there was some concern about uh, facing him in game one if the Tigers uh, were the team to come to Baltimore. Um, 
this is a good San, uh, excuse me, Kansas City team with one of the best players in baseball and Bobby Witt. Oh, Freudian slip there with the San Diego team. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're really good, too. We can talk about them if you want. Um, they're still waiting on an opponent. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Uh, I think, and I know what you were alluding to also, is we didn't get, like, it wasn't like we missed Scooble and got a bum we're facing. Reagan struck out about 230 batters. He is an enormous left-handed arm. Yeah, he's a great left-handed arm. And J.P. Piccolo, the general manager of the... Piccolo. What, what is it? Piccolo. Piccolo. Yeah. Piccolo. Yeah. Uh, he did a super job last year turning Araldus Chapman into Cole Reagan's. Awesome. Uh, an awesome trade last year in May last year. Uh, and Reagan's developed into one of the best arms in the league. I think they acquired Corbin Burns for this moment. They also acquired him to be the the titular head of the pitching staff and set an example. And for the most part, except in August, he did that each and every time out there. He kept his team in the game. He kept the other opposite the opposite side down offensively, and then. He's also acquired to be the guy to start game one of a big series. And I think the fact we got so many players back and the momentum we have, and I think a big factor that isn't being talked about a little is, is I think the Orioles this year will benefit from playing immediately rather than waiting the four or five days to play a game. Uh, so I like the Orioles. It's not going to be easy. Uh, this is a very capable team, but Kansas City also showed some vulnerability the second half. They twice lost seven games in a row, um, so they've got some weaknesses in the lineup. One thing is there's talk that they're getting their first baseman back right. who drove in 97 runs, Dan Pasquantini, and that's a big that's a big get for them. But again, like we had to worry with Westberg, uh, who had a broken hand this guy had a broken thumb is is he going to be fully healed and i don't know if he's rehabbed much at all uh but supposedly he'll be in the lineup tomorrow luke really i didn't know that yeah i didn't either that's what i read today yeah you heard he was hitting uh swinging the bat some but i didn't know if he was game ready or not so that'll be interesting well we'll find out tomorrow you know the the big thing the o's getting the, the the you know uh, Mount Castle, Mount Castle, Westburg back, it, it, that's tremendous. And I, I think uh, I, I really look at Westburg being a guy. There's always somebody that you don't expect that come, that rises up, and then there's somebody. There's guys that you expect to do well that don't. So I, I look at Westburg to be a big uh, a big piece of this going forward. Look, I'd I'd love to eat crow on Ryan Mount Castle. He's certainly capable of rising to the moment, maybe just coming back from injury. He won't be thinking as much. He'll just be reacting. Uh, but they could use a big series from him. He could be a big difference maker for the Baltimore Orioles in this series against Kansas City. Uh, weather tomorrow, supposed to, again, be rainy in the morning, supposed to pretty much clear off. Sounds like it could be either a little bit of a late start, like 5 o'clock. Uh, I'm not a weatherman, and I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night, but uh, it it looks like they'll get the game in tomorrow. Uh, and again, the Orioles play at 4.08 tomorrow, 4.08 Thursday if that game is needed, and 4.38 tomorrow. Uh, the games will not be on mass. And Luke, do you know which network is going to have the games? ESPN 2. ESPN two. Ben McDonald's going to be one of the uh, color guys. He is going to oh, be wow. one of the color guys. Yeah. And then is Palmer doing some broadcasting somewhere? I, I, um, I heard him talking about it. That's sounded like uh, maybe the radio. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it might be. He might be on ESPN radio or something. I'm not sure. Um, one other uh, thing is Masson tonight. If you're watching this either live or shortly after it airs. I think it's seven thirty tonight. Masson is going to have a whole hour long uh, preview of the playoffs. So with Kevin Brown probably hosting that, uh, and probably all the voices that you you've heard all summer. 
Uh, that's going to do it for today. Again, we thank our friends at A.J. Michaels, expert and award-winning A.J. Michaels, heating, air conditioning, and home performance. They'll improve your home's energy efficiency and comfort levels. The heating season is coming fast. New rebates and discounts are available. More at ajmichaels.com. A.J. Michaels and Carrier. And, of course, we've been brought to you by Costas Inn. Mouth-watering soup, crab cakes, and more at the Costas Inn. Luke's always looking down he's, when we're doing our thumbs. He's looking uh, at his thumbs. Uh, <laughs> he's got good thumbs. He's got, the, but he's got young thumbs. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be a good name for a band, Ross? Young, young thumbs. thumbs? Young thumbs. Of course. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Hey, guys, it's been a blast all season long. We'll be on next Monday or Tuesday, one of those days. Uh, Ross and I will be working on it. We're going to try and talk to Shane Turner, a uh, former member of the Giants uh, coaching staff, development staff, minor league manager, you name it, Shane did it. He wore every uh, hat you can wear out there. He wore a lot of hats. 29 years. All right. Luke Jackson, thank you. Ross Grimsley, thank you. And we'll see you down the road uh, pretty soon. And let's go O's. And let's get the party started tomorrow. Bye.